Millennials are truly changing the world, but is that a good thing? The jury is still out. From your favorite childhood breakfast to delightfully tacky yet unrefined restaurants, here are 10 things that are disappearing because millennials aren't buying them. Number 10. One of the oldest sports on the planet might be in danger of extinction. But according to the Dalai Lama, when it dies on its deathbed, it will receive total consciousness. So it's got that going for it, which is nice. It's been calculated that in the 1990s, approximately 9 million people between the ages of 18 and 34 enjoyed playing a round of 18 holes. During the last decade, however, this sport has lost more than 5 million participants in the United States alone. Why is one of the most popular sports among the elite and the affluent slowly disappearing? Well, it seems that millennials are driving a wedge between golf course owners and their revenue. Simply put, golf is far too expensive for most millennials. Not only do you have to pay exorbitant fees to actually get a club membership, but the equipment and the gear you need to buy are crazy costly. Oh snap, I just said the word of the day, exorbitant. Exorbitant means highly excessive, exceeding the appropriate limits in intensity, quality, or size. Good synonyms would be inordinate and unconscionable. See if you can use exorbitant in a sentence in the comment section below, and we'll feature the person with the most creative phrase in the next video. And big shout out to Ellie Kindred Zombie with assuage as the word of the day. She wrote, my boyfriend noticed I had really bad anxiety, so he called in work sick to assuage my anxiety. Nice sentence, Ellie, and hold on to that man. He's a keeper. Ultimately, when it comes to golf, the price is wrong, Bob. So for those of you who love swinging the wrenches, in the not too distant future, you may have to get your foreplay somewhere else. Number nine, how can one of the most cherished meals of our childhood be dissipating into thin air? There are plenty of reasons why millennials seem to be rejecting cereal. First and foremost, tricks are for kids, and we're old now. <laughs> Secondly, the health issue. Most cereals are loaded with sugar and empty calories, which is delicious, but not too nutritional. And even if there are healthier cereal options, they're either incredibly expensive or bland, or both. Brands like Captain Crunch might still be popular among kids, especially the child masochists out there who love to get the roof of their mouth torn to bits. But even this trend is starting to decrease as millennials are now having children of their own and are choosing to offer them other options for breakfast. Why wouldn't millennials prefer, for instance, a good egg-based breakfast? It's far cheaper and healthier. There are plenty of scrumptious recipes that are far more tempting than an old, boring bowl of cereal. Number eight, traditional gyms where members exercise on their own and focus on their own personal routines are actually on their way out. Millennials, frankly, aren't that into the way people used to work out 20 years ago. They want to make an experience out of it. Socialize, take a class, have a healthy drink, talk about their feelings, and add it to their Instagram story. Boutique gyms are in. The numbers don't lie. Studio gyms grew more than 70% between 2012 and 2015, while traditional gyms experienced a weak gain of 5%. Those are some puny numbers. Do you even lift, bro? That's a big difference right there. And there's a huge profit to be made by adapting to the new generation's demands. It seems that millennials prefer to pay for specific classes like SoulCycle, CrossFit, or Barry's Bootcamp. Apparently, they're willing to pay extra for a more exclusive experience where exercising is only one of the many perks awarded. Gyms should try to adapt to the new trends if they're determined to survive. For now though, it seems like they might be on their last set. Oh, didn't see you there. Hope you're enjoying the video. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. That way, you won't ever miss any of our new content and it helps other people to find the channel. You're great. Number seven, millennials are killing cable. Waiting a week for the next episode to air is so 1997. Streaming is in and binge watching is the new normal. It's more time efficient because you don't have to watch commercials and a Netflix account is far cheaper than a cable bill, especially when you use your roommate's sister's best friend's password. And now big players like HBO have adapted to allow viewers to enjoy their shows on more and more devices. So users aren't dependent on cable to actually watch their content. This puts cable at a huge disadvantage to the other alternatives, and the numbers show it. 
Streaming seems to be the primary medium for 61% of the people between 18 and 29 who seem to prefer it over traditional media. Old-fashioned linear television also doesn't allow the kind of personalization that streaming offers its customers. And if there is something that millennials appreciate, it's watching what they want, when they want it, and where they want it. You can't watch TV on your cell phone or your tablet, but streaming is available anywhere that you have internet. Convenience is the name of the game, and cable TV hasn't been able to think outside the box. Number six, massive homes. For millennials, showing off wealth as a sign of social position and prestige tends not to be perceived as posh and appealing, but quite the contrary. Owning a massive home with too many unnecessary luxuries is increasingly viewed by millennials as ostentatious and wasteful. Millennials are a generation that's yoked by student loans and concerns over economic and environmental issues. So being wasteful tends to be viewed as untoward. Being socially conscious is more than just a trend among the millennial generation, and this naturally alters their perception of what is important when purchasing, or in most cases, renting their first home or apartment. Additionally, the trend with millennials was to move into or around cities where the price of property is much more expensive than the country's rural areas. Number five, processed foods. Nowadays, millennials tend to pay great attention to the labels of most products they purchase, particularly those that they'll end up eating. This is precisely why overly processed foods such as American cheese seem to be on a slow but steady path towards obscurity. According to Bloomberg, consumption of American cheese fell 1.6% in 2018. This generation seems to prefer natural foods, which allows them to eat healthy and know what they're actually putting into their bodies. Sales of processed foods like Kraft Mac and cheese have decreased massively in the last few years, and this trend doesn't seem to be changing anytime soon. In February of 2019 alone, the stock of Kraft Heinz plunged more than 27%. That's a big fall to take, especially for an industry giant. Big players, though, seem to be adapting to the new trends. There have been attempts from fast food restaurants to avoid losing the millennial market. For instance, they've been switching to cheddar, gouda, or other less processed, less artificial products. Whether these changes are successful in regaining loyalties remains to be seen. Number four, Applebee's. Who would believe that millennials wouldn't want to eat good in the neighborhood? But the problem for Applebee's is that it takes two seconds to find dozens of restaurants online which all feature pictures of delicious looking dishes. The millennial generation is famous for enjoying a great meal and then boasting about it on their social media profiles. By the way, no one cares about the food that you're eating, so there's no need to post about it. If I could, I would dislike it. The problem with restaurants like Applebee's is that millennials just aren't excited about spending their money eating at a place where one size fits all seems to be the rule of thumb. The menus are aimed to please those who want consistency across restaurants, while individual preferences seem to fall by the wayside. So those in their 20s and 30s would much rather spend a bit more on high quality restaurants, or if money is tight, avoid chain restaurants and pick healthy, personalized options. This trend can be immediately noticed when reviewing the numbers. While fast casual places that focus on organic ingredients and on the go cheap options like Panera and Sweetgreen are increasing their sales, Applebee's seems to be losing customers every year. Number three, shopping in the mall was a defining part of living in the 90s. This is certainly not the case today. Millennials have begun to show an aversion to spending an entire afternoon strolling around department stores with limited selections and steeper prices when they can instead browse Amazon from the comfort of their own couch. With just a click, you can check different websites and make sure the best price and the best product are one and the same. Another convenient aspect of shopping online is that the products arrive at your doorstep without the need to waste time commuting and waiting in line at a busy store. Millennials tend to appreciate convenience, i.e. we're pretty lazy, and there's nothing easier than clicking on a link and buying a shirt. Number two, kids of the future may not have the option to deliver newspapers as their first job. Nowadays, people in their 20s and even early 30s seem to be far more interested in listening to podcasts or checking Twitter to get their news. Seeing a millennial carrying around a newspaper would be like seeing a vegan carrying around steak sauce. Growing up with the internet has made the generation more used to an immediate and constant flow of news that print simply cannot provide. When purchasing a newspaper, you know inherently that you'll be reading yesterday's information. How can this stack up to the online options out there? 
Digital sites can upload news articles within minutes of an event taking place. In the US alone, newspapers have seen their industries shrink more than $4.5 billion over the past seven years. And this trend seems to be accelerating as time goes by, with more and more companies either downsizing or closing their doors altogether. Number one, the once massively popular restaurant. Hooters is a chain that was founded in 1983 and had a simple yet innovative concept. Hot women in short shorts, serving hot wings and burgers to a mostly male clientele. Seems like a robust business model that would enjoy everlasting success. However, what was once a wild and inventive concept during the 80s now makes many millennials roll their eyes. Getting to see a nice décolletage while munching on fried food simply isn't most millennials' cup of tea. As we've discussed, they've been choosing healthier and more upscale options instead. And then of course there's the inherent gender issue, which doesn't help. There are those who would love to see Hooters bounce back. But between 2012 and 2016, more than 7% of Hooters restaurants shut down and the profits of those that remain open have decreased significantly. And this seems to be a trend that's here to stay. One thing is clear, to stay in business, Hooters will need support. What? 